My name is Lee Stearns and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Geology at the University of Kansas and also a member of the Center for Remote Sensing of Ice Sheets. I am heading to East Antarctica to study the dynamics of one of the largest glaciers in Antarctica, Bird Glacier, which has, everyone always thought was kind of slow and boring and not very exciting glacier and then we noticed in 2006 that it accelerated all of a sudden um, and that was linked to the drainage of these subglacial lakes. They're about 200 miles upflow, you know, up in its catchment basin. Bird Glacier drains ice from the East Antarctic ice sheet and the East Antarctica has the potential to raise sea level by 60 meters if the whole thing were to collapse. And we're not saying that that's going to happen anytime soon, but we need to understand how ice is leaving the ice sheet and flowing out to the ocean in order to be able to better predict sea level rise in the future. Sea level rise has consequences not only to, you know, our fellow citizens and global population, about 50% of which lives within a vertical meter of sea level, uh, one meter of sea level rise equivalent. And so it could displace a lot of, of societies and cause a lot of hardships. A rise in sea level really can impact a lot of storm um, patterns and a change in climate can affect precipitation amounts and the patterns of precipitation in Kansas, which really affects our growing seasons um, and, you know, our hot summers and cold winters and those extremes might change. And so it's, it is, what I study is a sea level rise issue, but it's intrinsically linked to a lot of other um, environmental, atmospheric and societal issues. In the past five years, we've really shown that we can do this work in Greenland where glaciers are flowing about you know, an order of magnitude faster. So the project that I'm on is for, to study bird glaciers is a three year long National Science Foundation project. And this first year, uh, we have each year we will put out GPS units and GPS is just like what you might have in your, in your car for driving and it gives you your exact latitude, longitude, height. The GPS units that we're using will give you the, so the position with the precision of a, you know, the tip of a pencil, you know, millimeter scale. Um, and so we can, learn how the glacier moves throughout a season. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put out about 30 GPS units along the length of bird and across the, um, across the trunk. And then we're going to let those collect data throughout the entire season and pick them up in February. Bird Glacier is one of the largest glaciers in Antarctica. And it is really crevassed, which means that the surface is really broken. Um, and that's because it's flowing quite quickly and ice can't deform that fast and so it, kind of the surface breaks. And so nobody's ever landed on Bird Glacier before because we haven't had the kind of technology and the logistics to be able to support a field program. The field team consists of myself and my co-PI at the University of Maine and we're each bringing a graduate student. Um, and then we are accompanied by two professional mountaineers who are paid to make sure that we're safe and you know exercise good judgment and, and where we're putting out our instruments and when we decide to that we can pick them up safely versus you know when it's too dangerous for us to to retrieve them. I love going to Antarctica. I've been a number of times and I always make sure that I bring a, a book from the, you know the old explorers experience from when they went down there Shackleton or Scott Mawson and and the experiences that they had with bad clothing and you know they didn't know if they were going to be picked up and so it's very easy to uh, you know in the course of our work think oh this is so hard it's cold and then you know at night if I pick up a book of, of the experiences that these guys had it, it really puts it in perspective.